It's October 22nd and uh, welcome to another edition of Canadian Independent Media. My name is Ed Johnson and uh, this week uh, we have uh, a few interesting stories I think, one of them which I wrote and uh, Jack will be talking about fracking and democracy in Canada and uh, I will be talking about some interesting websites which uh, you may or may not have heard about that uh, give a positive spin to all of this um, um, information that we've been giving you for the fast, past few weeks because there are people out on the front lines trying for change and I think they deserve your attention. So the first one that I'd like to bring to your attention is uh, the Council of Canadians. I've gone to several of their meetings and they uh, bring in uh, interesting speakers like Maud Barlow, for instance, uh, to talk about, in her case, talk about the books that she's written about the, the water problem in Canada. I've got a few of the videos online, actually, of, uh, of her and uh, some other people that they brought, like uh, Alan Castles, which I mentioned uh, last week. Um, uh, another one is Stand Earth. And uh, they are challenging the fossil fuel industry, and they have a campaign to defeat Kinder Morgan's proposed Trans Mountain Pipeline. And uh, you may have seen in the news recently that in Enbridge sent the bailiffs to confiscate office furniture and electronics from their office, but since backed down. They uh, protect healthy forests, negotiate with governments and logging companies to implement forest protection agreements. Another one is uh, InPowerMovement.com, and uh, they, uh, they're an interesting one. I, I suggest you uh, uh, turn in, tune into their, their videos because uh, they're focusing on solving the smart meter problem by holding corporate executives and government actors financially accountable for the first time ever. A local organization, which actually is a, a, a big network in BC, is the Dogwood uh, Foundation. And uh, they're probably best known for the No Tankers campaign. And uh, their statement is, our core belief is that decisions should be made by the people who have to live with them. Another one is uh, I like is openmedia.org. And uh, they're working to keep the internet open, affordable, and surveillance free. Um, they've told us lately that Bell Canada is trying to convince the Canadian government to censor the internet by establishing mandated website blocking system by including it in NAFTA negotiations on the sly. Uh, Lead Now is another one. Uh, env it envisions a just, sustainable, and equitable Canada built and defended through the democratic power of an engaged public. Another uh, group uh, I'd like to mention is uh, independent news and opinion sources, which we get some of our information for these stories from, and uh, there's a lot more there that we just can't cover in this few minutes that we have. Um, one of the best ones is globalresearch.ca, and they do in-depth reports on major news stories and information you won't hear on the nightly news channel. Another one is nationalobserver.ca, and they are an award-winning investigative journalism from Canada's national online newspaper, and they are reader-supported through subscription. Another one is the TIE, which is 14 years old. The TIE strives to be a widely read and respected independent online magazine that publishes news, reviews, and commentary not typically covered by BC and Canada's Main Street media. And there you have it. If you have a chance to check out some or all of those, uh, I think it'll, you'll profit by the information you will receive and it'll, it'll be uh, a little easier on us and we won't have to talk about so much stuff and you can come on and talk about it yourself maybe. Um, so uh, here's Jack talking about whatever he's going to talk about this week. Let's see. What is it this week? Fracking and democracy. You've heard some of this before, but uh, it bears repeating and there's some new information that he has for you. So take it away, Jack. Natural gas and oil are big business in Canada. Fracking can be used to get both. Fracking is a poisonous process that contaminates the air, land, and water around the wells and also uses and poisons huge amounts of water to do the fracking. This is what can happen to people who are unlucky enough to live around a fracking site. Like a standard kitchen match to my water and 
like I said, it is unpredictable, but the methane randomly travels with the water, and sometimes it will light quite spectacularly. Just like that. Corporations use fracking when gas and oil are trapped in loose shale rock. The wells are often over a thousand meters deep and can run horizontally for a mile or longer. Water is pumped into the rock under high pressure through the well and the rock is fractured or fracked. The gas or oil escapes and can be captured. This fracking uses large amounts of water mixed with a variety of poisons. From two to eight million gallons of water can be used to frack a single well. That is 600 or more tanker truckloads of water poisoned to frack one well. And then the, they are left with 300 or more tanker trucks of poisoned wastewater that have to be removed and dumped somewhere. A single fracking operation can have dozens or hundreds of wells, with each one poisoning millions of gallons of water. In California, this poisoned water is now being used to irrigate food crops, including organic foods. The province of Quebec banned fracking in 2011, and Canada is now being sued for $120 million under NAFTA Chapter 11 for that decision. It's unclear whether fracking is still banned in Quebec, but Quebec did recently stop another big fracking project. Scotland, Germany, Ireland, France, and other nations have banned fracking. It's also banned in many cities, towns, provinces, and states around the world. Parts of California and other U.S. states have banned fracking. But the industry will not stop, and they have purchased a lot of political support. In Canada, more than 200,000 wells have been fracked, mostly in Alberta and northeastern BC. And remember, each well can use up to seven or eight million gallons of water. This is totally insane, but the corporate media never talks about fracking, and the corporate politicians refuse to stop it. Here in BC, the new NDP government fully supports a natural gas industry based completely on fracking. It seems that many of our politicians are quite happy to poison our water, land, and air. Politicians of all parties. Perhaps this is because our entire political system is controlled by corporate Canada. This is a big problem that we have got to deal with. Let's work even harder and let's stop this crazy fracking. Democracy is important, and here are four things we can do to have a better democracy. But first, what is democracy? A lot of people would say democracy is government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And that sounds pretty good to me. Do we have democracy in Canada? I don't think we have very much. For example, I've heard that about 80% of Canadians want genetically engineered foods labeled. And yet, in May of 2017, the Parliament of Canada voted to not label GMOs. The GMO issue involves food safety, public health, and protection of our environment. And yet our parliament, the people we elect and pay to represent us, they betray us constantly. The vast majority of Canadians don't want homelessness or high house prices, but we have them. And one big reason is that our governments, our governments betray us constantly. A recent poll suggests that only about 17% of Canadians trust Parliament and only 10% trust political parties. That is very smart of us. So here are four things we can do to get more democracy. First, we need to get a good proportional voting system in Canada. Proportional voting is important because it gives citizens more power over the politicians and political parties. That's why our rulers will not let us have it. But really, if they won't give it to us, it's up to us to take it from them. Secondly, we have to reduce the powers of the leaders of our political parties. Under Canadian law, the party leader can kick out of the party anyone who dares to disagree with them. This means that the people we elect to represent us 
cannot represent us because on any important issue they have to do what the party leader tells them to do or their careers can be ended the next day. That is completely undemocratic. And when these party leaders become the prime minister or the premier, then they have almost total power over our entire government. And that also is completely undemocratic. Third, if we want more democracy, we have got to get a free press. But in Canada, some eight or ten giant corporations own virtually every TV station, radio station, newspaper, and major magazine in the country. These corporations completely control the news that we get in their media. Canada needs a media that is independent of corporate control, and we can do that. Fourth, we should start some citizens' assemblies on democracy in Canada. A citizens' assembly is just a group of people, average Canadians, picked at random, who are brought together to discuss important issues. Because the assemblies are picked at random, they really can be the voice of the people. If we had a few citizens' assemblies talking about democracy, they would help inform and educate us all. And the assemblies would probably put forward some very good ideas about how to improve our democracy. I think that no matter what issues we are interested in, from health care to the economy to social issues to protecting the environment, if we had more democracy, I think things would be a lot better. Unfortunately, what we want doesn't really matter too much, and we always seem to be getting what corporate Canada wants instead. Democracy is important. It's something we should focus on and something we should work on. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope that uh, you learned something and that you will turn off the television and uh, tune in to some more things that we've been talking about. Uh, Jack mentioned that I neglected to tell you about one important uh, website that is a local gentleman who runs, and it's called uh, PacificFreePress.com or CA, is it, Jack? <laughs> I think it's Pacific. Oh, try, try both, anyway. <laughs> and. Uh, he does uh, news issues and interviews with people around the world, something like As It Happens, only uh, on, a, on a smaller scale and a, a much lower budget. So until next week, thanks very much for watching, and uh, we look forward to uh, bringing you some more important information. Bye.